Hey everyone, this is Retro Renovo again. We're going to talk about some Zelda type stuff today. Um, so primarily, what do we have going on right now? It's another Zelda jamboree, right? We have this news of Tears of the Kingdom. Not rumor, it's reality. So now that we know that, we have a lot of stuff going on. We have people saying that there's going to be a, a Zelda Direct and there could be some truth to that, right? So, all that said, we know there's going to be a new Zelda game. That's great. Uh, we knew that was going to be the case for a while now. It's good that we have a tentative release date and stuff like that. However, um, most of the conversation now has shifted to, you know, what are we going to see, right? So, what I decided to do, and what might be more accurate, is to look to the past and see if we could find some clues. Now, one of the things that I usually do when anything is kind of new and, and uncertain and kind of mysterious, you just look to the past a bit and see, see what the prevailing opinions were at the time. And a couple of really quick searches revealed some interesting stuff. Now, I was tracking a lot of the Nintendo NX news back you know, in 2015 and so on. That was what the Switch project was called at Nintendo. It was called the NX, similar to how we had Project Dolphin prior to that and you know Project Midway with the Xbox, which, oddly enough, is kind of hard to find information on now, but it was called Project Midway. Anyway, so now let's take a look at some of the things that I think might be relevant, okay? Aliens. Now, if we pull up the... Tears of the Kingdom trailer. We see things that are kind of odd. And what comes to mind is we see a lot of vertical play in the game. So it's very interesting that Nintendo, in their infinite wisdom and knowing how to time these things, would have shown us a game where... In the initial trailer, Link is flying around a world that seems to be kind of disjointed. There are islands floating in the sky. Are these the tears that they're talking about? The tears of the kingdom, perhaps? Uh, remnants of some sort of ancient thing? I don't know. But what we do see is a lot of vertical play and the emphasis on that. So... Oddly enough, and where am I going with this? What was the last um, Zelda title to be brought fresh to the Switch? Well, um, that would be Skyward Sword. And what do we see in Skyward Sword? We see flying around. We see disjointed worlds. So clearly, the minds at Nintendo intended for uh, a preview of sorts. Um a feeler, so to speak. And that was Skyward Sword. And not to diminish the game, there are a lot of people that are very passionate about Skyward Sword. I was never one of them. However, I do respect um, I do respect all the titles equally. And I think that it, it does deserve a lot of positive attention. However, I don't know if the powers that be at Nintendo at the time felt the same way. Now, why do I say that? Well, if it's true that Tears of the Kingdom is going to play out in a very flight-dependent type of play style, we would immediately then start to draw comparisons to Skyward Sword. And those things cannot be mutually exclusive. You cannot have the most recent installment of Legend of Zelda franchise on the Switch showing a, a very much flight-dependent game ahead of the reveal of the next Zelda installment, which just so happens to be flight-dependent. Um, again, this is a lot of speculation. We could speculate on other things, right? Like a Nintendo Direct for Zelda, stuff like that. Let's not do that. There's enough people doing that out there. And uh, I just think this is more worthwhile. So if you're tuning in for the first time, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to. Um, 
So let's just get into this, right? So I have a theory, and I'm going to break this theory down. This is going to kind of be a little bit more of a long format, so bear with me. Um, I should have some keywords down there you could search on and skip ahead. Um, yeah, so let's start, let's start with something. Let's see, where is that? So we have a, a Yahoo News article here. Um, this was composed by someone named Justin Haywald, February 12th, 2015. The title, How Did Aliens Get Into the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask? Um, and we have a, a, you know, a pretty, a pretty long, um, lengthy discussion here with Aiji Onuma, I believe that's how you say his name, who has since become a pretty ranking uh, general manager at uh, the department. Which department is it? Let's find out. Uh, Aiji Onuma is a deputy general manager at Nintendo EPD. So Nintendo EPD would be their entertainment planning and development division. So essentially, anything that Nintendo cranks out goes through this department and through the general managers. And the deputy general manager, uh, being A.G. Onuma, some would say, uh, you know, the mastermind behind a lot of these Zelda titles. So here we go. An interview with A.G. Onuma, dated 2015. This is fresh off the heels of Ocarina of Time Remaster for the 3DS. And just before the release of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D on the 3DS. Um, we say, you know, you know, Miyamoto is going to take the spotlight as the original creator of Zelda. You know, the man who's getting his director, but he's not willing to talk about it. So, you know, blah, 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 blah. So here we go. You know, one thing that felt different from the other Zelda games, uh, the section where you're rescuing Romani Ranch and the horses from aliens. When I played this as a kid, I thought they were sent by the Gorman brothers, blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. Um, so we're talking about aliens and, and stuff like that. So here we see in this interview, um, you know, Aonuma is being asked, uh, you know, where did this alien type of inspiration come from? The reason we used this at the time was because Japan was experiencing something of a UFO boom, right? And it went so far as TV shows covering it and explaining to people what cattle mutilation was. Um, so this whole thing of being abducted by, by foreign entities, the earth being invaded by aliens was becoming popular. Um, so, so here we have, here we have, Aonuma's predisposition to being, you know, he's he's in touch with what's going on in the world, and that that is playing in, albeit right. This isn't a, a huge part of Majora's Mask, but it, it really does stand out. And um, there are, though, interestingly enough, some elements where this might become more important. You could say, oh yeah, there's this cool part of Majora's Mask where there was an alien thing and you know that's great nobody likes majora's mask who cares about aliens we care about link running around in, in bright green fields and blue skies and, and crystal clear waters and everything's great so we hate majora's mask and everything to do with it so we don't care well let's take a look at this article uh zelda universe right here's an article dated january 26 2021 kellen Rusinello. Uh, let's see, Zelda's study, aliens almost invaded Breath of the Wild. Hmm, that looks interesting. Um, there are many endemic threats in Breath of the Wild's Hyrule, scorching deserts, lava spewing volcanoes, and freezing mountains among the most hostile environments where unwary tra travelers risk exposure, blah, 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 blah. Was it surprising to learn that the developers considered introducing one from out of this world? Right, so here we go. Uh-oh. Oh, so here we go. Here we have Takazawa. In the first of a three-part making of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild series released in 2017, the game's art director explained that some of our younger designers came up with very unique suggestions, like the idea that UFOs could invade from space and abduct cattle. The video also displays concept art of Link staring at a massive UFO as projectiles launch from the massive ship. Right. Um... So Takazawa also refers to aliens abducting cattle as unique back in Majora's Mask. So 
so here we have a really interesting thing. Um, we have, I mean, just look at the look at the concept art here. Now we have these younger, these arguably younger, um, you know, some of the younger designers. They say some of the younger designers came up with very unique suggestions. Um, you know, it, it was worthy for them to discuss. So look at that. I mean, that's the that's the Flatwoods monster, right? So here we have, here we have. So here we have the Flatwoods monster. Um, you know, that's that's clearly the inspiration for the Romani Ranch aliens. That is the Flatwoods monster. Real or not, that's it. So so here here's another really uh pivotal kind of argument. Again with Ionuma, are there any Western games that influence where you get the ideas or inspiration from? He goes on to say, certainly I do play Western games. I think I've put some comments out there about being really interested in Skyrim. But then people started connecting it to the idea that I was making an open world game now. I really didn't want to make that connection too explicit since that's not really how it works. Oh. So here we have a 2015 article where they are clearly working on Breath of the Wild. We have rumors coming up that some people are... We have people suggesting that the next Zelda game is going to be an open world game. And we have Aonuma who is directly involved with that game, clearly denying it. So he's lying. Right, so here we have a 2015 February article where Aonuma, the deputy general manager of Nintendo's entertainment division, is clearly lying. Clearly. It's not even up for debate. So what can we take from this? Um, to a couple things, at least two things, right? Nintendo will do what they want to do, but they will incorporate what's going on in the world. It's very important to them. So how does this, how does this all come together? How does this all come together? The Tears of the Kingdom trailer, okay? We start off, we see these, these rune-type inscriptions in stone. It looks like a, some kind of entity. Um, you know, we see enemies from Breath of the Wild kind of ins inscribed in a stone, almost like a, a prophetic kind of thing. And we have this kind of um, situation where there could be a prophecy, right? We see, we see what appears to be Princess Zelda, you know, levitating. We see um, Zelda joining hands with something. We don't know. They cut that short. Is it Link? Who knows? But here we have another, another interesting flying dependent kind of world. He's just jumping down. And we see a lot of vertical play. So, you know, what what could be going on here? What essentially could have... I mean, here we have inscriptions on a stone there. I don't know if that was, if that was as visible as, as I'm suggesting. Um, so if we look at this part, it's one minute, eight seconds into the official Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom release date announcement trailer. We will see Zelda... We will see Link flying on basically some kind of, uh, you know, Legend of Zelda version of the Sakara bird type thing. It looks like a, an ancient mechanism. Clearly shouldn't be able to fly on its own. It looks like it's made out of stone. Okay. But what do we have here on this plateau? And those appear to be Nazca lines. That is a at least an homage to Nazca lines. Now, ancient alien people, you know, if you're, you know, predisposed to that kind of stuff, um, the Nazca lines were, um, and still are, these anomalous uh, inscriptions into plateaus in Peru at a very high elevation that uh, appear to some to have been perhaps runways for ancient uh, flying mechanisms or navigation, right? So um, it, in times where people should not have been able to even produce something at scale correctly while being on the ground 
and then producing something that was visible from, you know, essentially low Earth orbit um, accurately and to scale. So here we have Link on a flying device, which appears to be some sort of ancient technology. It's, you know, shouldn't be flying. And then he's he's aimed at a Nazca line kind of structure here on the ground. This is probably somewhere where he's going to try to land would be my um, my supposition here. And we see this kind of green coloration here, which resembles the green um, appears to be a dragon or a serpent eating itself. Right. So, yeah. And this inscription in the back here. This very ancient looking thing. Are we seeing a continuation of the quote unquote um, young developers from uh, seven going on eight years ago? Are we discussing their desires now? Perhaps some of them have stayed behind at Nintendo. Of course, I'm sure some of them have left, but perhaps some of them stayed behind and they, and they always wanted to see this through. And what's the additional overlay here? We have been bombarded over the last uh, 12 to 18 months with UFO disclosure type news articles. Uh, I don't want to get into what exactly might be going on there. Um, however, we should at least mention that it is happening. We do see a lot of discussion now where in prior decades we would say, you know, the, our government, for example, in the West at least, would say, no, there's nothing going on. And now they're saying, you know, here's what's going on, and, and yes, it is going on, and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and so we now have this crossroads where we have old, well, not necessarily old, but developers from years past who had this desire to create something they've waited they've they've served their time perhaps and now they're being offered this opportunity to make it come true so are we going to see a alien invasion breath of the wild inspired kind of thing i think you know perhaps not but we will probably most likely see some sort of um you know ancient technology of course we've seen that with like the sheikah slate and things of that nature, but I think they're really going to double down at Nintendo. You know, are we going to see flying spaceships? Are we going to see tractor beams? Are we going to see, you know, the Independence Day landing craft coming down and blowing stuff up? No, but I will say that we're probably going to see a crossroads. Um, at least we're going to touch on those concepts. We're going to probably be piloting ancient technologies. It's going to be um, UFOs under a different name, right? They'll call it something different. Essentially, we will recognize it as UFOs. People sitting down and be like, wow, we're, Zelda has UFOs. But, you know, of course, the verbiage at Nintendo will not include UFO. It probably will not include alien or anything even remotely close to that or anything where you could draw even the slightest comparison to that. However, my assumption is we will be seeing that. So forget when the release date is and if there's going to be a Nintendo Direct and stuff like that. Um, I think this is wildly more interesting. So, again, if you're new here, this is Retro Renovo. Um, sometimes I fix stuff and sometimes I just give my opinion. Um, it's been a lot more skewed towards giving opinion recently. But anyway, if you like uh, digging in and doing research like this with me and, and you kind of like the longer format stuff, give me a like and a subscribe. And um, if not, you know, or either way, just give a comment. And we'll see if we can uh, help shape the page and, and make something that's more interesting for you guys. However, I think this this is the kind of stuff that just gets me going. Um, I really think it's interesting. And I do often think that the past is a good indicator. Um, again, there's a lot of news articles out here. I didn't even touch on some of these. Uh, we will see, you know, like Aonuma just talking about all this wacky stuff that was going on with Majora's Mask. And, you know, a lot of these people are still around, Okay. A lot of these people are still around, so um, it's worth considering, you know, some of the things that they enjoy doing. Anyway, uh, until next time, this is Retro Renovo. Like and subscribe if you want to. If not, that's cool too. Thanks again, and thanks for listening.